want to talk a little bit about ducting, return air. Ducting is important for furnace. You have to have the right amount of airflow going through this to cool it off or to give you the proper wash to give you the proper amount of heat that we're looking for. Basically, there's things that can happen with your ducting that'll reduce the airflow through the furnace or over the heat exchanger. And when that happens, guess what? Not enough air gets to, through to the, the vents, probably. Yeah, and basically it starts overheating. You want to make sure that you have, you don't cover your ducts or you don't cover your registers. You know, if you, you feel like there's not enough airflow out of one and there's too much out of another, yeah, then yeah. sometimes people will close them off a little yeah. bit. I lived in old homes that were like that, yeah. <laughs> ducts, flex ducts can get collapsed. So can hard ducts and the floor yeah. ducts. Uh, I've seen where I put a flashlight down a floor duct and I've seen it go from here to here. <laughs> so it claps down somehow. I like to explain it like a garden hose. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a garden hose and you hold it in the middle, only that little, I don't care how long the garden hose is, if that is collapsed, that air is not getting through and, and that's, that could cause it to overheat It also not give, warm up the RV. So. Right. And it seems like it takes forever to warm up the RV because it'll start cycling on the limit switch. It's, what do you mean by that? It's the nastiest term we have with furnaces. Uh, <laughs> cycling on the limit switch. Uh, it's worse than intermittent. Um, basically what happens is if when it overheats our little limit switch in the back of the furnace, that, that's the limit switch. Yeah. TOD, ECO, there's lots of names for it. Yeah, if it overheats, it turns off. Um, and then what'll happen is it'll short cycle. So then what happens is you get about five minutes for this airflow to run before it's listening for the limit switch to turn back on again, or for that circuit to close. So if the circuit closes again, the limit switch cools off, and then it'll reset, and then it'll go to fire again. From my understanding, the limit switch is just a little piece of metal that will that makes the contact and makes those wires have continuity but when it gets hot it pops because it's it's almost like a hot pan that bends and that that piece of metal will come off those contacts and there's no continuity in fact it's by by metallic so there's two different oh. that's the reason why it, it separates so there is something that's different about this furnace than than other furnaces uh, a lot of furnaces will when they cycle on the limit switch, it'll simply turn off the burner, fan continues to run, and then the burner turns on again. Fan continues to run, it heats, it overheats, then, and then it turns off on the burner. And so the burner's just turning on and off and on and off. So it's almost doing the opposite of what we want it to do. It's actually taking too long to heat up, and it seems like the furnace is just running forever before it does heat up. What other what other things can cause it to overheat? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say I have my, I have like flex ducts on this. Okay. What happens if one of the flex ducts falls off? Hot air just dumps right back in. Hot air is just gonna dump right back into the furnace. So the hot air is just gonna go recycle in it. Furnace has a hard time heating hot air. <laughs> and it'll cause it to overheat. We don't want hot air in the return air. Sure. Uh, you want to make sure your return air is not blocked either. You know, if you have you have a, a specific amount of square inches that we need for return air. If you pile a bunch of stuff in, in front of the grill, luggage. yeah, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, it's not going to be able to get cool air in. Right. Warm it up, so it's going to warm up warm air. Yep. Like I said, there's a lot of things that can cause this thing to overheat, but those are the majority of them. Either the hot air and the return air blocking the return air, or blocking the output to air. Either way, we want good airflow over that heat exchanger. So, a lot of furnaces run a little differently than this. So, I'm gonna show you what our little cycle looks like if it's overheating, because, like I said, listening will give you a lot of details. You betcha. So, let's reset this guy. And you can tell my gas pressure sitting around 12 and a half. I heard it. Ignite. Mm -hmm. Warming up. Got hot air? 
A little bit. I'm getting there. Yep. Okay. Now, let's say at this point in time, well, I'm being a little impatient. Normally it takes four or five minutes. So what I'm going to do here is simply unplug the ECO so the circuit's open. And if you noticed, we have no more fire. It turned off immediately? Just like that. So what you, you basically did is you tricked it into thinking it's too hot. Exactly. What I'm going to do here is let it cool off a little bit because it gets hot pretty fast. <laughs> and then I'm going to reset the ECO just like it was cooling off and resetting by itself. The fan turned off. Ah, got it. So that's a little different. And that's one of the things you really, really want to pay attention to is because if you're dealing with a furnace that's short cycling, uh, it seems like it's turning off on the burner. When that ECO limit switch resets, you get that little pause for about five or six seconds. And if you hear that, where it's burners turning off, then you get a pause, then the burner comes back, the fan turns on, and then it goes back to ignition. You know the limit switch is not working. You know you're dealing with an overheat situation or a bad limit switch. The fan, you really have to pay attention to because if you take the extra minutes to listen for what's happening, it'll help you hold long down the way when troubleshooting because now you know that you're dealing with a furnace that's cycling on the limit switch.